We're all back. What's up? <laughs> Tier of courses that I'm willing to shave my neck for in Kingston Heath in Victoria. Get me out of bed to shave. Guys, are these wearable? <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's serving much of a purpose to no be honest. Zach freaked us out, so we had to have white socks. I love the shoe. Down here. Yeah, so at New South Wales, they just basically told me, like, you have to wear socks, like, this high. So I went ahead and made it calf height, you know, because uh, it's what I used to wear when I played college football. Went one and nine my senior year. <laughs> Who'd you guys beat? We beat Brown in double overtime last game of the year. <laughs> you guys throw in the field? Go Lions. Sean, what should we expect today? You mean from, from me or from the courses? <laughs> Both. Okay. From me, you're gonna, you should expect some, a generational driving sure. performance. I'm the ultimate driving machine. But um, Kingston Heath, very flat site, laid out in like 1925. They brought in McKenzie to do the bunkers. It's supposed to be ridiculously good bunkering. Well, we have an odd, a weird number of people, and it's not the same amount of people each day, so we can't do like Wolf Hammer every day. So we're doing like aggregate score with handicaps and for the whole entire trip. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Whoever takes the top off the defense the most each day is to wear that at night? Wears the yellow jersey at night, okay. yeah. And then what does the guy in last place wear the no laying up jersey? <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's go play some golf. Let's go play some golf. Oh, we're meeting up with Mr. Loco today as well. Zach Blair. Might be too good. For those who don't know who Zach Blair is, he's a PGA Tour player. He's an architecture nut. He looks like he's about 15 years old. Good on ya. Good on you, mate. We're all back. What's up? Sick vest. Hey, hey bud. Melt wool. That's not good in the rain, bro. It's gonna stink. Over the course of a day around Zach Blair, you'll hear about 50 of the best of something he's ever seen in his life. Oh, best par four I've ever seen. Best three iron I've ever hit. Best bogey I've ever made. Best up and down in my life. He says it so often that with anybody else, you would lose perspective, but with him, it's just, you know, you expect that to happen six or seven times a day. It's sick, bro. Might be too good. We out here. We down here. Look at the seasoned veteran with the socks. Yeah, these are uh, straight from New South Wales. We got them from the grocery store. I love it. <laughs> Somebody discarded a cigarette. Neil's on notice. Is this yeah. for when you go OB? The most recent guy to go OB has got to wear the turnover shape. You got to remember, University of Miami football was undefeated at the time. This was a lot more topical. Zach went to. Army Navy surplus store. <laughs> I bought a fish patch, an eight patch, a ranger patch. It was not like so much merit based, it was like demerit based. First eight or worse. Stubble. Worst duck hook. Snap hook, right? right? First eagle. First wasabi. Okay. I think I had 75% of the patches after the first day. World's best turf. I mean, Kingston Heath is like a top 20 golf course in the world. That might be the course that sticks with me the most. Just awesome routing, awesome experience, awesome bunkering, awesome green complexes. I mean, they, they kind of had a little bit of everything. It was really enjoyable. I loved the holes and I liked the golf course and everything was good. You know, the walks were good. Everything was awesome. That's what makes it so remarkable is the course is amazingly routed through a relatively benign piece of property. Basically the membership strategy at Kingston Heath was kind of just don't be a dick, I think. A mix of older people, younger people, kind of different economic classes. I mean, it was it was like a really cool vibe that they had going at, at Kingston Heath. Kingston Heath is kind of one of the places that you base a trip like this around. Like that was, that was at the top of all of our lists and it, it didn't disappoint.
Uh-oh. I don't think Simon, Simon didn't know what he was signing up for. Carrying the weight of your actions. Simon Dick was our main host at uh, Kingston Heath. Simon helped us plan the trip from almost beginning to end. Well, on a daily basis was giving us updates on where we should be playing on what days. So we owe a lot of this trip to Simon Dick. So the Party Panther, I'm still trying to wrap my head around who, who he is. He's like a 22 year old, 23 year old college student studying landscape architecture, golf course design. He's a part time DJ. Uh, hits the shit out of the ball. A lot of intrigue and mystery surrounding him. A little bit like Daft Punk. He asked that we blur out his face, protect his identity. Apparently the story goes that this used to be tea tree up the edge and right along the left hand side here. Okay. Tea tree is that weird stuff right yeah. there. Greenskeeper at the time went in to have a look around and discovered Mackenzie bunkers. He fell into bunkers in the tea tree. So all he had to do was cut back the tea tree and he just had beautiful bunkering. <laughs> We got nail hair cutting to not get the eight patch. Save seven. I just want to know where the gold at. Where the gold at? Almost unanimously, our favorite hole at Kingston Heath was the par 3 15th hole. One of the biggest imprints that McKenzie made on the golf course was converting this hole from a blind par 4 into a par 3. DJ made a 2 on this hole. He was the first person to make a 2 on the trip. He earned the 2 patch. Goes right on the bag. Might have been his only birdie on the trip for him. That was awesome. It's fun. DJ. That was great, bud. Have you had a good time? You know, where are we headed? We're going to get victimized. <laughs> You're taking the chain to Victoria. I got it. And the chest hair. <laughs> it's all coming. <laughs> I didn't it's notice you. It's a package deal. <laughs> He's a good guy back there, this guy, you know? So none of us no laying up guys had ever met Dan before this trip. He came down to Australia to caddy for Zach in the Australian Open. He says he only caddies for Zach in the cool events. He tagged along with us on the trip and became a pretty integral part of the trip very quickly. The guy bombs the ball and he came up with about eight different nicknames for him by the end of the trip. There was Nuclear Dan, Thunder Dan, Dan Marley, Dan Marino, Dan Orlovsky, the Danimal. Redan was my favorite though. Redan Hicks. You spend too much time with the same people over a week on the other side of the world when you're jet lagged. This is the result of that. We rolled up to Vic and the weather really changed. The clouds just parted. And everything was... Perfect sunshine. Or this driveway. That's what the party it costs three times as much as you're supposed to. Is that right? They busted a pipe. Round two. And you pull up right next to the first hole, which kind of looks, it's you, as soon as you see it, you're really confused. It's like, is that a par three? Is that a par four? and pars are relevant exactly dj pulled iron out he wanted to lay up from 238 yards downwind on the first hole at victoria the fucking website is called no laying up you gonna go for it dj the layup was the play i think i made it four i think i won the hole i got to play with billy who's a pro at victoria and that was like a clinic in what it must have been like to grow up playing on those sandbelt courses he had this stinger shot that at one point nipped the fescue that was in front of the tee box, it was so low. But once he got on the ground, it ran out like 50 yards past the rest of our shots. Like, I've never had trage envy as bad as I had playing with Billy. How was your time away from the chain? You know, it feels right to have it around. You actually play better with the chain, I think. I, I think I do too. Yeah. Happy to be back. How long did this one take? Uh, hole number one. I was out on the course after about seven holes. From there on, it was like just a tour de force. It was awesome. The back nine has, I'd say eight of the nine holes on the back are legitimately very good to great golf holes. So 15 at Victoria was top three, I think we, I think unanimously top three holes of the entire trip. Entire trip. Drivable par four. I went left of the green and I had like a 65 yard pitch back, but it's all fairway. That's a great example of how short, short grass around the green is such a great protector. I would put 15 at Victoria up against any other short par four in the world. How are we feeling, uh, Tron? We don't usually walk 36 in a day. How are we feeling there? Got I'm struggling more. if I'm being honest. We've yeah. got a few more days of it. I'm ready to roll. You're good? Yeah. 
You do this a lot. Yeah. Thanks, mate. I'm worn out. Tron with Camila. Nine, Camila, what'd you shoot, Tron? 91. Yes! <laughs> Tron got, see? Tron got the 91 patch yeah, and the 8 patch. So, Victoria, something happened on the drive over there. For instance, on the 11th hole, I had two TC Chens on the same hole. A TC Chen, for those that don't know, double hit in route to a 9. Do you know what two double hits does to your score? Uh, we should have played Stableford, is what we should have done. Okay. Well, we didn't. Nope. <laughs> End of day one, Dan, 70, 71, three under. ZB, 72, 73, one over. I had 74, 71, one over. Tron, 68, 80, four over. <laughs> DJ, 75, 76, seven over. Neil, 73, 78, seven over. Chain and the tank. <laughs> I am the opposite of a gamer. I play worse with better players than me, and I play really well with people who are worse than me. I'm a front runner, you know, and I get out there with guys that are scratch and clearly better ball strikers, and I just like just panic. Just collapse. I just collapse. We just show up at the airport. I have no idea. Oh god, I don't feel great about this. There's just nobody here. That's got to be our plane right there, right? Yeah. Figuring that out. What up? Yeah, we're gonna go uh, putt for some dollars, basically. Five dollar makes, three dollar three putts, two dollar shorts. So, well, that's, not that's short, dog. <gasps> oh, oh, he's got it. Down. Really? Hang out after every hole is way easier. That's the random. Tom's in. I like this, Neil. I like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh. How do you feel? Roach! Roach! My beautiful boy, Roach!